Well guys, welcome to another vlog. This time I have my cousin Whitney and we have just been hanging out, um, talking and she has known about my struggles for a while and so we just wanted to do a vlog for you guys what to expect when you're not expecting because we have that in common yes definitely and so whenever we whenever me and Cody were trying to get pregnant no one had told us what to expect we thought when we got off birth control that we would just be pregnant right away and we were actually yeah. just kind of every month that's what we were like oh are you pregnant yet are you pregnant yet mm -hmm. it's crazy so when we were trying to get pregnant it had been several years and I didn't really realize but when my brother and sister-in-law told us that she was pregnant um, we were at a family gathering and I just remember holding Skylar's leg like oh my gosh I can't believe it you know because we had been trying at that point I didn't even realize it had been two, two, two years I think and so um, finally after that I decided to go to the doctor because everybody in my family is very fertile and so I thought it would be really easy to get pregnant mm -hmm. and nobody told me what to do if I wasn't able to get pregnant easily um, and so I really didn't have any idea what to do and so I finally just decided to go to the doctor and um, we went from there after we went to the doctor but I do remember not feeling like I had anybody to talk to about it, you know, um, negative pregnancy test after negative pregnancy test after negative pregnancy test. I didn't, I didn't feel like I had anybody that I could say, like, I'm really struggling with this. What do I do? Yeah. So. I felt like I did have a couple of friends who I could talk to about it that were struggling with me. And so that was really important. Um, I feel like, though, Cody probably didn't have that. Um, as much. Yeah, I think it's super important to find a community that of people that are going through the same thing as you. Or have been. Yeah, yeah, who have been there because, I mean, obviously I have my babies now, but I remember then feeling like I didn't have anyone to talk to outside of my parents. Like, in the end, I finally started talking to my mom about it because um, I went to the doctor and we found out what was wrong. Um, and just a little bit of my story, I had a congenital defect in my womb. So I was just born that way. And where your womb is supposed to be nice and open, mine was closed off with tissue. And I remember her telling me the day that I had these, this dye injected into my uterus that you will never have children. I sat up and she said, you'll never have children. And I almost fainted. Oh, um, I just can't imagine. Yeah, we went a couple of days before she called back and said, so there's the surgery you can have. Oh. <laughs> And I ended up having that surgery, but then even after I had the surgery, we did almost a year of Clomid. Um, we did a couple of IUIs, artificial insemination. Um, we did, and then I was doing shots when I finally got pregnant, I was doing like a hormone therapy. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, you mentioning to me before um, that insurance makes you do certain things in a certain order. Yes. Which I didn't realize yeah. until I was struggling and yeah. I went to the doctor and she, took my blood and I fainted and um, she told me at that appointment, no news is good news. So I just assumed everything was okay, but yeah. I never actually found out the results. Yeah. So I was struggling the entire time with not ovulating and mm -hmm. I didn't know. Yeah. I was like taking ovulation tests and sometimes I would go a whole month without ovulating and I just didn't even know that that was my problem. Yeah, I would say if you're not, um, after six months, even eight months, especially a year, if you still haven't con successfully conceived, um, to go to the doctor, especially if you've had a miscarriage, mm -hmm. um, obviously you're gonna go to the doctor. But um, if you've not had a successful pregnancy in that amount of time, go to the doctor because there's, technology is boundless in what that they can do to fix that. And I would have never known what was wrong with me if um, I hadn't had this dye injected into me. Um, mm -hmm. And they did that to see if my tubes were blocked. and come to find out I had something totally different. So yes, go to the doctor and your insurance will make you do certain things in an order. That's why I had to do Clomid first because that's easiest, cheapest, pop a pill and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, and it might've even been with, well, what we were thinking too, whenever I got tested and then nothing really showed, well, we don't know what showed, but we were thinking, well, maybe Cody needs to go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, that's a big thing too. A lot of times, sometimes it's not the woman, sometimes it's the man. They can have a low sperm count, they can have um, weak sperm count, you know, different avenues that it could be the male. It totally doesn't have to be the woman. So I remember a lot of months going by where I was just getting negative pregnancy tests mm -hmm. after negative pregnancy tests and how devastating that was every single time. Yeah. Um, and how it's just like a knife to the heart and a piece of you just dies a little inside every yes, time you get that I remember negative that. pregnancy test. So I would say it's definitely important to have, you don't have to have a community of people. You don't have to post it on Facebook. I actually wouldn't encourage that. Um, I don't encourage you tell a bunch of people that you're trying. I yeah. say you have one or two, maybe a family member, maybe a close friend that you talk to about it so that yeah. you can say maybe just, I'm not pregnant this time. And that's all you might have to say. But, yeah. but that's enough. Yes. Don't make it a huge production every time because that's just harder on your heart than it needs to be. Yeah. Um, you just keep that between your spouse and a few close people, but don't you know, because people are going to ask you, they're going to say like, oh, are you pregnant? You know, what are the tests? Mm -hmm. and, you know, I wouldn't tell people you're trying necessarily because. Yeah. And not It's because, more painful. Yeah. That's why it's, it's more yeah. painful. Um, and I'm not saying even after you get that positive pregnancy test that you shouldn't tell people, that's not what I'm saying either. I'm just saying while you're trying, I wouldn't just tell the world Yeah. because it's We only on told you. a couple of people, um, and it was good because I could message and say like, Hey, I'm. I took a pregnancy test today and I'm not pregnant and I'm really upset about it. And then yeah. they would just encourage me to, you know, trust in the Lord and, mm -hmm. um, just take it slow. Yeah. You need your community. Even if, um, you're just searching social media for, mm -hmm. there's all kinds of things. Pinterest even has encouragement about infertility. Yeah. There's communities out there that you can talk to that can help you. Um, feel encouraged or maybe give you ideas of things you haven't thought about or mm -hmm. um, just different things like that. So I would say you need a community um, to help you through that because it's such a dark journey and you can't do it alone. Yeah. And your spouse is always good too, but it's nice to have a girl that, I, in my experience, it was nice to have a girl that related to me that would, like yeah. even I would message you sometimes and you could give me advice and things like that. Yeah. And so it's just good to have someone who can really, really relate. Yeah, I mean, I remember my husband saying like, um, I can't fix this because, you know, as my spouse, as a man, he's, he sees yeah. a problem, he wants to bring a solution, he's like, I can't fix this, and it would break his heart every month because he wanted children too, obviously, but it was something that he couldn't fix. Yeah. And so that's hard on your spouse, and then mm -hmm. you you have to have somebody that you can lean on that's not, not just your spouse. Just your spouse sounds bad, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, I would say the biggest lesson that I learned was trust because um, continually you're getting these negative pregnancy tests and you're feeling defeated and you're feeling like your life doesn't have a plan or a purpose or you're less of a woman. I know we've yeah. talked about that, like what kind of woman am I if I can't have a baby? Yeah. Um, and, and losing your identity because you're so wrapped up in procreating that you forget like who you are in Christ. And I remember um, my mom telling me so many times that I believe that God is going to bless you with children. I believe if, you know, you're going to be a mother, I just know you're going to have kids. And I would tell her, like, I don't want to be a martyr for this cause. Like, she would say, you're going to have such a great testimony. And I'd say, I don't want to be a martyr for this. Like, I don't want this. Yeah. I would never choose this. And God continually, continually would remind me that he had a plan for me and it was to prosper me and not to harm me. Even in the moments where it felt so dark and so harmful, mm -hmm. I can just remember those quiet moments where God would say like, I've got you. Um, I don't want you to be, be worried about this. Um, just rest in me and have peace. You know, it was incredibly hard and I probably had to tell myself that 75 times a day, every day. Um, it, it was a dark journey, but um, without it, I wouldn't be where I am now. I wouldn't have the faith that I do now. Right. Um, I I know going through what I went through, I, I always said, I believe God can move mountains, so I believe that he can heal my womb, and, and God chose science to, to heal my womb, and that was the way that he chose to heal me and to, to give me the ability to bring life, but do I believe that God could have just opened my womb and made me have babies, however? Yeah, I do yeah. believe that. Um, but I, I would definitely say the breaking point was when 
I mean, this was honestly a month before I got a positive pregnancy test was um, God was showing me that I remember I was working somewhere where I was with people who use drugs and I was working with people who were um, homeless and things like right. that. And I remember just looking at those people and just trying not to be so angry with God. Like, why would you give this woman who uses drugs, right. who already has seven children taken away from her by C CPS? Yep. Been there. Why would you give her children and not me? Yeah. Um, and then God just showed me, I love them as much as I love you. You know, we judge each other on a scale. You know, we view one sin worse than the other sin. Mm -hmm. But God sees lying to your neighbor the same as murdering your neighbor. Um, and that was such a huge thing for me because, you know, I grew up in a Christian home and I thought maybe I was above that. Like, I'm not judgmental. I'm a Christian, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, that was not the case. Um, God just revealed to me, like, look, this is in your heart. And now, um, because God showed that to me, I can teach my children to look at everyone as God sees them and look at sin as God sees sin. Yeah. Um, and time, look at time how God sees sin because even though right now it feels like a really dark, really painful, hard journey and you feel like you've been on this road forever, for an eternity, yeah. to God, it's just this fast in the blink of an eye. You know, he, his timing um, while it may, may seem insane to us, while it may seem painful, it's in his plan, it's in his purpose, and it's for us, it's to prosper us, it's not to harm us, and that's what we constantly have to remind ourselves when when we see that negative pregnancy test that this isn't to hurt me, even yeah. though it feels so painful, um, that, that God has a plan, um, and even though it might not happen on our time scale, um, that he does have a plan, and it'll be good. Yeah, that's what I had to learn too, is that his timing was perfect, not mine. And I I would remind myself that every month, but at the same time, it was a hard, hard lesson to mm -hmm. learn. And I think that that's, when I really, truly, when Cody and I just let go and we were like, you know what, let's just not worry about this anymore. We're just gonna t slow down, mm -hmm. take it easy. And that's when we got pregnant. Mm -hmm. So it's like exactly, I don't know what the Lord if that was what the Lord was trying to teach us yeah. or what. I mean, we can't know the mind of God and we don't, we don't know how things happen the way they do. Um, yeah. But it definitely helps if you can just relax, take a step back and try to, excuse me, try to have some peace, try to yeah. maybe take a vacation. You know, yeah. there are things like that that can help you ease that stress because honestly, stress and anxiety can yeah. reduce your chances of having a successful um, pregnancy. And so, I'm going to try to dial that down, even though it's so incredibly hard. It is. Yeah, yeah. So when Skylar and I were in our last um, cycle of IUI, COVID, we tried it all. She said, if this doesn't work, the thing that ended up working, if this doesn't work, then your next step is IVF. And I remember thinking, I would so much rather spend twenty to $50,000 on a for sure child, yeah. i.e. adoption, um, than a risk, a chance on a child. Right. You know, I would rather spend that money on a for sure thing. So because you can go through all that IVF and still yes not not have, have a successful system. pregnancy. Absolutely. Yeah. And like that would just totally rock my world if I had mm -hmm. spent seven years trying to have a child and then that failed. And those strong people do it all the time. But yeah. still, just for me personally, I would have rather said, let me take one of the thirty thousand children in foster care in yeah. Texas and give them a home and I'll be their mother, you know? Yeah. And that may be what God has in store for you. Mm -hmm. um, it might, I, I know one day me and Cody want to adopt, but yeah. when we were struggling right at the end, that's what we were gonna do. Like yeah. we, we were trying to decide if we wanted to go for further testing or if we just wanted to take a break mm -hmm. or, and we were gonna just thinking, well, let's just adopt. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure adoption is a path you and I both are going to be walking down someday in our yeah. life. <laughs> it's not without outside the realm of possibility for us either. It's something we're already talking about. Yeah. Um, and that's such a beautiful picture of the gospel adoption is. And yeah. so um, that's really exciting to me. And I would say if you're struggling with infertility, maybe just be praying about that, thinking yeah. about that, because that's absolutely another opportunity that God be, could be presenting to you to become a mother Yeah, um, is through adoption. And I can't think of a better way you know, yeah. to have a for sure child. Definitely. <laughs> and you can pick whether it's a boy or a girl. <laughs> <laughs> and the way that the, 
that they would change your life and you would change their lives forever. Like mm. that's just so powerful and absolutely so awesome that you even have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so I know one day Cody and I will adopt maybe sooner than later, who mm -hmm. knows, but, um, just the blessing that adoption is, I think is sometimes taken for granted. Yeah. And I can remember people saying to me while I was trying to have my own biological children was like, why don't you just adopt and how offensive that can feel yeah. in the moment. Um, but I would just say, you know, if you're going through that, try to have a soft heart about it. Um, mm -hmm. because there are children that need good homes and it's important that we remember that, you know, yeah. that, that there's, there's not, there's more than one way to skin a cat and more than one way to have a child. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I think that education is key. So it's kind of unbelievable after hearing people hear my story, how many questions they have, and I think, I didn't know you didn't know that. Yeah. Um, but then I think back to when I started going through this, and I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So I think that education is key. Not only educating yourself about how sex works. Mm -hmm. I mean, because honestly, we all get that little sex ed in school or, you know, the awkward birds and bees talk with our parents. <laughs> but we don't understand like the full anatomy, the full scope of how it works. Like I, I can't believe that so many people don't know. There's like a 24 hour window yeah, that you I didn't know can that. actually get pregnant. Mm -hmm. The rest of the days are just nothing. Yeah, <laughs> you can't get pregnant on those days. Yeah. So do some research, figure out when you are ovulating because that's when you get pregnant is when you're ovulating. Right. Um, there's little tests you can buy. I think I told you about those tests. You yeah. can buy a huge pack on Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you'll need that many yeah. if you're like me, because yeah. I had to take one every single day. And I would say the first couple of your first couple of cycles, take one every day, like after your period and start taking a few every day, um, so that you can see, and you'll start, I mean, I went through this for years, so I know my body very well. Mm -hmm. um, you'll get to, you'll start noticing different things about your body, mm -hmm. things your body produces that will show you like, hey, you're ovulating now. Mm -hmm. So anyway, just do some education on your body, on your partner's body, your spouse's mm -hmm. body, um, on how it works to make a baby, like yeah. scientifically. Because I truly believe that education is the biggest key. So it's really important that you um, figure out your cycle, figure out, figure out when you're ovulating so that you're not just mindlessly having sex every day. Although that might be fine for some people. Have at it. But <laughs> um, it's not necessary. Not, no. <laughs> it's not necessary is what I'm trying to say. Um, so that's the first thing I tell people. Get educated. Um, get educated on the process of like what it's like to be pregnant, what it's like to give birth. Um, because you could be beating yourself over the head about this and you really don't know what you're getting into and then you find out like, okay, maybe I'm not ready for this right now anyways. Yeah. Um, some people just see cute little babies and they lose their minds and they think, let's go make one right now mm -hmm. um, without thinking about all of the things that it entails to have a child. Right. Um, so that's another important factor. I would also say go to the doctor mm -hmm. if you're having trouble. Um, you can go to the doctor if you need some education. That's another good point. Yeah. Um, and then to just to, um, trust the Lord because our timing and his are very different. We work on very different time scales and I used to get so irked when people would say God's timing is perfect. And I'm like, well, I don't know what that means for me, Yeah. but, um, God's timing is right for us. Mm -hmm. um, we may feel like it's super painful at the time and we may get angry and we may choose bitterness over getting better. Um, but God's timing is what's right for you because he sees the future and we can't see the future. Yeah. So, um, he sees your future and he knows what's ahead and what's in store and we don't. And so it's really important that you trust his timing. Um, we can't live in any area of our life. We can't live a closed fist life and saying, I'm going to control these things and you can have this. No, we have to give it all to God. Even that, even, mm -hmm. um, when you become a mother, you will give the lives of your children over to him and, and yeah. trust him with those. I, I lose sleep a lot because I'm worried about my kids and worried about SIDS now. And I'm worried about all these things that I never yeah. would have worried about if I wasn't a mom. But in the same way, when I learned to trust him, without a child. I have had to learn to trust him when I do have a child. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to trust the, t the process. You have to trust his timing um, because 
he does promise us in the Bible that it's to prosper us and not to harm us, even when it does feel really harmful and really painful. Um, his his plan is prosperity. Yeah. Um, and another point I wanted to bring up that if in the end God says no, it's a hard pill to swallow even still that I have my babies. I remember uh, writing about it that if not, if God says in the end, it's not in my plan for you to be a mother, that he is still good. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't mean that he's the almighty oh, smiter in the sky, you know, that is out to harm us and that we can't trust him and that we need to be angry at him and that there is no God. That is not the case. Mm -hmm. um, God is so good and he will bring other things into your life, other people into your life, other avenues into your life. Um, it may be that he doesn't want you to be a mother now. It right. might just be right now he's saying no. Um, but it doesn't mean that it's forever. You know, nothing is forever until we're dead. And even then, you know, if you're a believer, you get eternity. Right. Um, it may just be that he wants you to go sit in the NICU and hold babies. You know, you yeah. never know. You never know what, what God might have in store for you. All that be it. That would be super painful not being a mom. But anyway. Yeah. Um, you just never know your future, but God does. Yeah. And he promises that it's good. It's good, and he is good, and um, he loves you. Even if your dreams and his plan for you don't match up, mm -hmm. um, that he is does, still good. Yeah, he is still good. Even if he says no, we're not right now. Yeah.